So the whole point of those examples was to show you that you can perform sequence processing by building a bunch of small functions that operate on individual elements of a sequence and then putting those together using the built-in map and filter functions and also some accumulation. And each stage in this processing pipeline takes in a sequence and gives you back out a sequence. Now I've been calling those sequences iterable values. An iterable value is something that's even more general than a sequence. It's just any value where you can get each element in turn. So iterable objects give you access to their elements in order. They're not necessarily sequences, because they don't always have a finite length, and they don't always allow for individual element selection, but they do give you things in order, which means you can process each element in turn. So very similar to sequences, but a bit more general. And many built-in functions in Python and in other programming languages take iterable objects as arguments. So for instance, tuple, the constructor for tuples, gives you back a tuple containing the elements past it. Sum returns the sum of some elements, min returns the minimum, and max the maximum of any sequence, and in fact of any iterable value. For statements also operate on iterable values. So this is a core concept that glues a lot of these sequence processing tools together. And it turns out that there's a generalization over how to accumulate the values in a sequence called reducing a sequence. Reduce is a higher order generalization of things like max and min and sum. So the way you compute the max of a sequence of elements is you can compute the max of the first two and then max that with the third, max that with the fourth, etc. until you finally find the max. And a similar story can be told about min and sum. So these three are built in, but there's no built in product, but we can implement that using reduce. So product takes the product of all the elements. And that means that we need to multiply together the first two elements and then take that product and multiply that with the third, etc. Reduce is in a module called func tools, functional tools. And reduce takes in, uh, its first argument is a two argument function that's going to actually do the combining of two different elements of the sequence. And its second argument is any iterable object. Here we used a tuple. Okay, and what it does is it multiplies together 1 and 2 to get 2, that result by 3 to get 6, that result by 4 to get 24, and that result by 5 to get 120. Or we're just applying the same function over and over again to combine intermediate products in order to get the final product. This is very similar to accumulate from homework 2. One more sequence processing tool you should know about in Python is called the generator expression, which is extremely similar to what we called a list comprehension in last lecture. It's one large expression that evaluates to an iterable object by providing map and filter expressions in between. So the general form looks like this, a map expression for some name and an iterable expression if a filter expression holds. It evaluates to an iterable object, starting by evaluating the iter expression, and then for each one of those, name is bound to each element, the filter expression is evaluated. If that's true, then the map expression is evaluated, and that's part of the resulting sequence. And there's a short version that leaves out the if. Okay, so what's the point of generator expressions? Well, they allow you to do the same kinds of sequence processing that we've done already, but just with a different syntax. So I can rewrite acronym using the same pieces first and capitalized that I have before by saying acronym using a generator expression is going to take in some name just as it did before, and it will return a tuple. But what's it a tuple of? Well, it's the tuple of the first letter of each word for every word in name if that word is capitalized. So if I call acronym generator on Berkeley, I'll get UCB just as I did before. 
but the syntax is a little bit different, so instead of explicitly calling map and filter, I've just written something with a for, an in, and an if, and when you see all those three in combination, that means you're looking at a generator expression. 